Giants, robots, dragons, gods, clowns? I mean, literally no one is safe from being taken down by Monkey D. Luffy. The hero of One Piece has spent decades now punching some of the most punchable faces ever to appear in manga and anime, and today we're talking about every single character that Luffy has actually defeated throughout the story. And funnily enough, the very first thing that Luffy ever did in the story when he set sail as a pirate was punch the lights out of the Lord of the Coast. And so he finally got his revenge on the Sea King that took Shanks' arm in the form of a knuckle sandwich, and in doing so, he finally proved he wasn't the same kid that he used to be. With this defeat, Luffy was ready to be a real pirate. And after a poorly timed whirlpool, Luffy then found himself barreling towards the Alvida pirates literally. After meeting his most pink friend and future hero of the marines, Kobe, Luffy then set the unwilling cabin boy free by punching his boss, the most beautiful pirate on the seas, other than Boa Hancock I guess, right, well, into the sea. And after that, Luffy then ran into some opposition while trying to recruit his very first crewmate. And actually a lot of fans remember Luffy fighting Exham Morgan after freeing Zoro in Shelltown, however Zoro was actually the one to finish the corrupt captain off. And so, in one of the biggest low-diff matchups of all time, Luffy actually defeats Hal Meppo instead, who was threatening Kobe with a pistol. And then immediately after that battle, Luffy then beat up Kobe in order to give the marines of Shelltown the impression that they aren't actually friends. After all, what kind of real friend would actually beat the snot out of one of his best allies? Psst, it's the kind who wants you to live out your dreams. And then moving over to Orange Town, Luffy came face to face with the lion tamer Moji and Richie the lion. And while Richie probably should have been caged, it was actually Luffy who found himself locked in a cage instead on this particular occasion. However, as a lot of characters throughout One Piece have found out, nobody can keep Luffy locked up for long, especially when he needs to fight on behalf of Choo Choo, one of anime's best boys. And on this occasion, Luffy couldn't just settle for simply beating up Moji the Lion Tamer, he also needed to fight the boss. And this was Luffy's first fight against a fellow Devil Fruit user, making it a significant challenge, but once Luffy and Nami managed to tie up all of Buggy's body parts, Baby Buggy didn't stand a chance and got Gum Gum bazooka into the stratosphere. And so by the time that the crew arrived in Sura Village, Luffy had already taken out a lion, so certified cat boy Captain Kuro didn't really stand a chance there. Yes, Kuro's claws were really sharp, but Luffy's wits were sharper. Okay, that's maybe not 100% accurate. Luffy doesn't have any wits, as we all know. His strategy was actually just so dumb, it actually ended up working, because he wrapped his rubbery limbs all around Kuro, so he couldn't use his speed to his advantage anymore, and gave him the headbutt to end all headbutts in the form of a Gomu Gomu Bell. And since all that sort of village business really worked up an appetite, Luffy and the gang next stop was the floating restaurant, the Baratier. And unfortunately, they weren't the only ones who showed up there without a reservation. Along came Don Creek, who led the largest fleet in the entire East Blue. Because after Dracul Mihawk has sliced up his fleet and ships in the Grand Line, he then tried to take the Baratier for himself. However, despite his underhanded tactics of using poison, spikes, cannon, and much, much more, he couldn't compare with Luffy's brute strength and was completely wiped out. And with Don Krieg also defeated, there was now only one pirate left in the entire East Blue who was more powerful and infamous, which was... Arlong. Now this saw shark fishman gave Luffy his most difficult fight in the story yet, but the stakes were pretty personal at this point. The final fight actually ended in the map room where Arlong had tortured Nami for years, forcing her to draw maps since her childhood. And so to make up for it, Luffy brought on Arlong and his entire park with a gum gum axe. Which means that we're now entering the Grand Line, and Luffy wouldn't take another win until Little Garden, where he went up against the Candleman Mr. 3, whose real name is actually Galdino, it turns out. Now, most of the crew was nearly turned into a wax museum, but Luffy waxed on and waxed off until Galdino was, well, gal decimated. <laughs> Sorry for that one. On Drum Island then, Luffy dethroned Wapol, a cruel king with a bad case of the munchies. And this was actually the first monarch or king that Luffy would ever punch, but it certainly wouldn't be the last one, and in doing so, 
he turned the drum kingdom into a democracy when Dalton was then elected the leader of the newly dubbed Sakura kingdom. In retrospect, Luffy being a very uh, American in that arc, I guess. And then Luffy went from beating his first king to his first warlord when Luffy defeated Sir Crocodile in round three of their fight. After being defeated twice by the sand user, Luffy beat him up using nothing but his own blood, sweat and tears, but mostly his blood I guess, which uh, hardened the Logia user sand and allowed him to be battered right through the ceiling of the tomb of the kings in the palace. And the crew's next destination after that was Jaya, where Luffy was able to demonstrate just how much he had grown to resemble his mentor Shanks. Because when this guy Bellamy here picked a fight and made fun of Luffy's dreams, well, he just sat there and took it just like Shanks did because he really wasn't worth the trouble. But later when Bellamy actually dared to hurt one of Luffy's friends, then Luffy got very serious. And so the Spring Devil Fruit user bounced all around Jaya, but Luffy himself didn't even need to use his Devil Fruit at all. All it took was a single punch to break Bellamy's spirit completely. And then later, once Luffy and Co. found themselves on the Sky Island of Skypea, well, they went up against NL's priests. Luffy actually did help out Sanji against this guy here called Satori, but Sanji made the finishing blow here, and Luffy's real battle, after all, on the island was against God himself, or, or at least someone who considered himself to be a god. In fact, NL here had never met an opponent who wasn't instantly incinerated by his lightning strikes, but was in for a very big surprise when Luffy's rubber body was just completely immune to any of his attacks. And so surprisingly, even without his lightning powers, NL still put up a quite decent fight using his observation hockey, which he called Mantra. However, in the end, Luffy defeated him and rang the bell of the City of Gold. Which brings us to the next opponent back on the Blue Sea on the infamous Long Ring Long Land when Foxy the Silver Fox challenged the Straw Hats to a Davy backfight. And in the final round of the game, these two captains had a one-on-one -on -one matchup, however Foxy's slow beam was so hard to deal with that it took Luffy's ultimate form to defeat him, which is Afro Luffy. And so despite Foxy's tricks and traps, nothing could defeat the boxing powers of Afro Luffy, and he did up ending winning this round, and also ending maybe the most tedious arc in all of One Piece. And surprisingly, the next opponent was even more difficult for Luffy to fight than the near invincible Foxy, however this one wasn't physically difficult, it was emotionally very taxing. That's because on Water 7, Usopp challenged Luffy for the ownership of the Going Merry, the cruise ship that needed to be replaced and suffered extreme damage during their adventures. And so Usopp used all of the resources and knowledge he had gained about Luffy's weaknesses throughout all their adventures together, but ultimately still was completely outclassed by his captain's true strength. And then when the crew finally stormed Enna's lobby to save Robin, Luffy's first victim was the CP9 agent Bruno, who ate the door door fruit. However, even for someone who can make their doors anywhere, there was no escape from the insane speed of Luffy's new power, Gear 2nd. And the fight against Bruno was Oda's way of showing off the new strength of Luffy's new gear techniques before Luffy then fought the real opponent of this arc, the leader of CP9 and the leopard fruit user, Rob Lucci. Because this leopard zone fruit user gave Luffy Luffy his toughest fight in the entire story so far. This CP9 powerhouse was willing to carry out any order on behalf of the government, all to satisfy his own immense bloodlust. And Luchi actually started by devastating Luffy with the secret techniques called the Six Powers, which don't actually show up all that much in One Piece, and particularly his strongest attack, the Rokuogan. However, Luchi finally met defeat on the receiving end of Luffy's Jet Gatling gun as well. And before before leaving Water 7, Luffy's grandfather showed up to crash the party, leading to a quick rematch with Kobe, and as anyone would have predicted, Kobe did not stand a chance at all, but he sure is getting stronger though throughout the story. Meanwhile, Luffy's next terrifying opponent was on the horror-themed island of Thrilla Bark. Here, the warlord Gekko Moria resurrected his ultimate zombie Ors from the body of a fearsome ancient giant. And things looked pretty bleak for the Straw Hats, but Luffy
Luffy took in a ton of shadows into his own body in order to transform into Nightmare Luffy, one of his most iconic and unique forms, and ended up crushing Ors. And as a result, next up was Moria himself, the next warlord on the list to fall to Luffy. And even when Moria used Shadows Asgard to suck 1000 shadows into himself and boost his own strength, he still was not able to defeat Luffy. And so with every punch that Luffy landed, Moria spit out more shadows, unable to control the power of so many at once, and after that fight, nothing really happened on Thriller Bark anymore, if you get my drift. And right after, when the crew then arrived at Sabaody Archipelago, well, they were ready to tackle the new world. But unfortunately, those plans went completely sideways when they went to rescue their mermaid friend Kami from a slave auction. And so when the Celestial Dragon St. Charles shoots Hachan, one of Luffy's friends, Luffy does the morally correct thing that anyone should do when encountering someone who owns slaves and, you know, punch them into oblivion. And then after Kuma here gives Luffy Luffy an all-expenses-paid trip to Amazon Lily, he finds himself in trial by combat against a Black Panther. But as the real king of the jungle, Luffy showed Bakura the Panther, who is the boss. But that wasn't over yet, because after that, Boa Hancock's sisters Mari Gold and Sander Sonia here went up against Luffy as well, and, and let's be real, Luffy would definitely have taken the W here, but the match was later called off when Luffy went out of his way to hide the mark of the Celestial Dragons on the Gorgon sisters' backs from the other women of Amazon Lily, thus stealing Boa Hancock's heart for life. Which now brings us to the entirety of the Marineford saga, where Luffy was just way out of his element. Yes, he took out a lot of fodder and impel down in Marineford, but in the end failed to take out even a single big opponent. So yeah, Luffy was truly in his big L era right here. However, the ever dependable Kobe was there as always to be taken down by Luffy in one hit, giving him that one W that he really needed. And I guess technically if you wanted to, Luffy did also knock out his own grandfather, Garp, the hero of the Marines. I mean, Garp didn't fight back whatsoever, but still, he did knock him down on the way to the executioner stand, so maybe like half a point here. And then after taking a couple of years off to power up, Luffy was back in business when he returned to Sabaody Archipelago and took out the Pacifista that used to give him trouble like they were nothing. And then while descending to Fishman Island, Luffy befriended a giant kraken, the only way he knows how to make friends by punching it as hard as he possibly could. However, we have to say he wasn't really trying to make any friends when he punched Hody Jones here, the leader of the new Fishman Pirates. Again, and as hard as he could. And even though Hody Jones himself was a bit of a disappointment as a villain, the battle against him really just served to prove how much stronger Luffy and the other Straw Hats had become over the time skip. And I mean, we have to consider here that his opponent was powered up by an insane amount of energy steroids, he was fighting a fishman while underwater, even though he is a devil fruit user. And even with all of these massive handicaps, Luffy took him out and destroyed this giant arc here, the Noah, with his Red Hawk and Elephant Gun techniques, like flexing by using a firepower at the bottom of the ocean. But moving on, the Straw Hat's next destination was Punk Hazard, where Luffy lost the first round to Caesar Clown, who deprived him of oxygen using his Devil Fruit powers. However, then very quickly in round two of this fight, Luffy figures out Caesar's trick and learns to keep the necessary distance that he has to stay away in order to keep being able to breathe. And so Luffy once again clowns on another clown with his awesome grizzly magnum technique that we see there for the very first time. And right after Punk Hazard, Luffy partnered up with Trafalgar Law and the allies went to take down Doflamingo, another warlord. Well, actually they went to destroy the Smile Factory so that Kaido would take down Doflamingo, but I mean we all know how well Luffy can follow a plan. Not at all, so instead Oda brought us to a gladiator match where a suspiciously familiar contestant named Lucy fought to try to get the Mira Mira no Mi that once belonged to Ace. And at that Colosseum, Lucy, who was shockingly revealed to be Luffy in disguise all along, easily brought down the giant Hairujin, who then would go on to join his grand fleet. He also fought this old pirate named Don Chin Zhao, who was once a rival of Luffy's grandfather Garp. And despite Luffy having really nothing to do with that old conflict whatsoever, Chin Zhao held a grudge and wanted to take it out on Garp's grandson, I guess. And that actually gave 
gave Luffy a chance to practice his Conqueror's hockey, and with a powerful hockey punch, he gave Don Chin Zhao his pointy head back that he had missed so much. But of course, right after Chin Zhao, there came the first real test of Luffy's new strength ever since the time skip. Because let's be real, everyone that Luffy had to fight up to this point, he never really had to give it his all, but Doflamingo really pushed Luffy to his limits here, forcing him to reveal his now ultimate technique at this point, Gear 4. That's because base Luffy couldn't keep up with Doflamingo's crazy strength and speed, but once he transformed into Gear 4, Bounce Man, he wiped the smile off of Doflamingo's face and defeated the Celestial Dragon and thus ended his terrible reign over Dressrosa. But then, right after Dressrosa, the crew set their eyes on the Four Empress, and in order to save Sanji, Luffy invaded Big Mom's territory of Whole Cake Islands. And in order to get his cook back, Luffy had to take down not one, but two of her sweet commanders. And first was Cracker, the warrior who had fought with hardened biscuit soldiers. Unfortunately for him, Cracker couldn't make enough biscuits to deal with Luffy's grand appetite. And so after eating his fill, Luffy used those extra calories to turn into Tank Man and Cracker got cooked. Right after though, Luffy's hardest fight yet came in the form of Katakuri, the future side master who could predict his every move and one of my all-time favorite antagonists that Luffy ever fought. Now, Katakuri's stretchy mochi fruit gave him the mirror image of Luffy's own powers, just stronger, which was very fitting since their fight took place in the mirror world. And over the course of their long battle, Luffy developed his observation hockey, allowing him to see briefly into the future. And the battle basically ended in a draw, with both fighters seemingly down for the count, but Luffy was able to get back up and escape Whole Cake Island with his crewmates, though there is a lot of discussion whether Kurokuri just let him win in the end or not. Which brings us to Wano, where in its first act, Luffy's first opponent was the sumo champion Urashima, and despite Urashima's superior weight class, I guess, he was still no match for Luffy. Next up, this lion-bellied gifter on Kaido's crew was also completely outclassed by Luffy, who defeated him with a Red Hawk attack, reminding Otama of Luffy's brother Ace. Now, of course, none of these battles on Wano really required Luffy to go all out at this point, none except, well, the one person you've all been waiting for. Which is, of course, Kaido, Emperor, and the world's strongest creature who gave Luffy the hardest fight of his life. Kaido's draconic transformation and command of advanced Conqueror's Hockey and Future Side made this Emperor more powerful than anyone Luffy had fought at this point in the story. In fact, Kaido was so strong that he defeated Luffy twice at least, and then seemingly literally killed him after the last one. Unfortunately for Kaido, that also led to Luffy awakening his Devil Fruit, and after that, Gear 5 Luffy went completely Looney Tunes on him, using Dragon Form Kaido as a jump rope and sending the King of the Beast to the magmary depths beneath Mount Fuji. And with this battle, Luffy truly became Joy Boy's successor and earned himself a title as one of the four Emperors of the Sea himself. And then right after the Land of the Samurai, the crew headed to Egghead Island where they reunited with some old rivals, Rob Lucci and Kaku, who had been promoted to ZP0. Now honestly, these guys seem to fail upwards almost as much as Buggy here, and even though Rob Lucci had also awakened his zone fruit at this point, just like Luffy, he just couldn't keep up with the absolutely wild abilities of Gear 5 and was at a disadvantage when Stussy ended the fight by putting Luchi to sleep, kind of stealing the fight from Luffy actually. But anyways, a much more suitable opponent for Gear 5 Luffy was the Admiral who showed up after CP0, Kizaru who had demolished the crew alongside Kuma two years prior at Saba Odi Archipelago. However, now Gear 5 Luffy can actually fight the Light Fruit user on roughly equal footing and the match ended essentially in a draw with both fighters completely immobilized. But after this insane streak of wins throughout the story and this match being a tie, what about all the matches that Luffy straight up lost? I mean, most of the time through sheer willpower, Luffy is able to pull ahead and beat characters many, many times stronger than himself. However, on surprisingly many occasions throughout One Piece, he has been fully and utterly defeated. How many times, you ask, and by who? Well, you can find out exactly when and how Luffy has been defeated throughout the entire series in this video right here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in this next one.